headed into the Sierra National Forest, about two miles. People on the rail never cars. never actually asked me. I have never asked them to come do something for a train. Yeah. If we look in the distance, folks, this gives us an idea of the scope of the logging operation. We can see the granite face of Mount Raymond in the distance. Mount Raymond stands at 8,500 feet in elevation. And the history that we provide, again, is of the Madeira Sugar Pine Lumber Company, and they had clear-cut over 30,000 acres of forest from the Sierra National Forest. 30,000 acres span all the way up to the face of that mountain. It has gone the same distance opposite trackside, went as far north as Wawona into the National Park, as far south as Bass Lake above the city of Oakhurst. Now being a clear cutting operation, that means that they take any tree that would produce a viable amount of lumber. So the forest in which we see here today is all second and third generation growth aging anywhere from 75 to 105 years of age at the oldest. These trees are also naturally seeded, none of which were planted back by man after the clear cutting operation was finished. So during this trip we're going to talk about some of the primary trees we see along trackside. First of which being these two here, the incense cedar trees. They have a rough reddish colored bark similar to a sequoia, also a very flat green foliage. It's not quite a needle and it's not a leaf. So looking throughout the forest, you might also notice some of the trees look like they've been through a fire. That in fact is a powder mold just growing on the outside of those cedar trees. The mold uh, tends to build up if the tree doesn't have enough sunlight to uh, burn it off per se. This section of the track that we're heading through now is Iconic Horseshoe Curve. I don't know why they call it that. No, I'm just kidding. Horseshoe Curve was cut out in the year 1908 by a group of Chinese laborers. They used nothing but chops, I mean, uh, <laughs> shovels, shovels and picks. Sorry. Hey, I said that to a Chinese group before too, and they like it, so that's okay. <laughs> No, they, they did all the work by hand. They were the main labor for that operation. They didn't wheelbarrow all the dirt into the center, which we still see it mounded up in there. If we continue with our primary trees, we can be at our second, like these small trees with the gray colored bark. It's called a white fir. The white fir has about inch long needles still kind of see if you get to take a closer look the needles at the tip of the branch often are a bit discolored showing signs of new growth the white fur is also very particular on how the branches grow out from one another They're stacked up almost like the levels of a building story after story lastly they have quite a few similarities in between the foliage of the white fur and the douglas fir which we all call our christmas tree these are just a bit skinnier. They're a little more like uh, Charlie Brown's Christmas tree. This third one's kind of unique. We'll stop at it. This is our California. 
California black oak and this tree particularly during the time of the lumber operation had a barrel hoop that was placed around the base of a baby tree oh and my. it eventually grew up and incorporated that hoop and actually split the tree so if you follow from the left side of the hoop you can see the scarring all the way down till it finally decided to go another way <laughs> Nature take its course. Huh? Now the black oak was very important during the time of this lumber operation. It was foremost uh, used as fuel for the Madeira Sugar Pine Lumber Company. The black oak being a denser wood would burn longer and hotter in their five wood burning locomotives as well as their entire mill was steam operated. Though the black oak was the main fuel source for the for the company it was also the main protein source for Miwok Indians here prior. They had collected the acorns that had fallen from the tree annually soon afterward to make them a little easier to ingest would soak the acorns into some water for a couple days remove what's called tannic acid. From that point on they would grind it up continually mixed with water eaten as an acorn mush somewhere like a cold cereal nowadays you guys, but I think I'll keep my frosted flakes. <laughs> the, blue marks, the blue markings, those trees are, were marked about six years ago for a selective logging operation. Unfortunately, the company had gone under before they finished their job. It wasn't really financially prudent to do uh, selective logging. They couldn't make a go. Indians never had horses here in this area. Hence the name Miwok. <laughs> I'm not sorry. I'm sorry. If a bear came, they were the U Run Indians. <laughs> or if they got tired, the U City Indians. <laughs> I don't get to use that Sean, one that much. Sean, he's recording all this. You know. A shame. Yeah, that's all right. That helps for witness protection. <laughs> Sean it is. Well, I also, I have my, his brother's name, Shane. So I may, Shane and Sean, you know, I may call you one of the other. It's happened my whole life. That's why I don't correct you. <laughs> That's good alibi, like I said. All right, folks. So at this point on our track off to either side, we start to notice these small bushes with a maroon colored bark. It's called a manzanita. Manzanita is a Spanish word that means little apple. In the late summer months, like we can start to see now, little red berries at the end of the manzanita branches. Commonly feasted upon by mule deer or black bear in the area. You all had your tickets, so they'll stick to the berries. <laughs> Underneath, you see these green leafy ground cover that covers the ground here. Um, it's called bear clover. Now, bear clover was given the nickname Mountain Misery by lumbermen or pioneer at the time. They called it that because a lot of people don't like the smell and it would leave a texture in their jeans or coveralls, somewhat like a tar weed. Uh, considered much to be misery. Native Americans here in the Miwok tribe would take bear clover medicinally. They would brew the leaves up into a hot tea, drink it as a cure for aches and pains as well as headaches. Come to find out that the leaves do have a high content of what's called salicylic acid, which is the main ingredient in acid. So after me telling you all these bad jokes, we need some. <laughs> The steam train is the big draw to our railway. These rail cars were very important during the time of the later part of the operation. These are 1928 Model A rail cars made by Ford Motor Company. They were used as taxis, they were used as fire engines, even ambulances, probably most important for those who needed it. For instance, if somebody had been hurt out on the line, rather than stop the whole operation trip back by steam locomotive they would send one of these out it could reach speeds upwards to 30 35 miles per hour on a long straight stretch here we go I'm just <laughs> Thank you. 
Cougar Pine, averaging somewhat to 12 feet through, it would take about five, six hours for the two men to cut down a single tree. After the tree had fallen and crashed to the ground, it was skidded throughout the forest by a donkey and was nothing more than a steam-powered moisture pulley system. It's used to drag the logs throughout the forest floor. Once those logs had reached the landing, they were then rolled on the skeleton log cars taken by steam locomotive to the sugar pine rub cut mill. So to get a little better idea on their scope, they had operated like a pattern shaped like a wagon wheel. And they had the sugar pine rough cut mill as the central location, like the hub of the wheel. They would branch out into each direction like the different spokes, clear cutting forest. And they could only do one spoke at a time. Once that was complete, they lifted the track and relayed it into a different direction until they had finished the whole circuit. Say that because if you don't laugh or say so, I can leave you here. <laughs> <laughs>